The race to multimodal continues as ChatGPT can now see and hear. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Today, we are talking about the latest developments in ChatGPT. They are very emblematic of the larger business battle that we find ourselves in the midst of. And in the second part of the show, we will dig into some very intriguing rumors coming from Twitter and Reddit around the company and just how much they've developed internally that we don't yet have visibility into. But let's kick it off with the announcement from this morning that, as they put it, ChatGPT can now see, hear, and speak. Developer relations Logan over at OpenAI says, this is one of the biggest evolutions for ChatGPT to date. Y'all are going to love these new capabilities. Truly incredible. So there are two big things going on here. The first is around using images as inputs for ChatGPT. The example they give is they take a photo of a bike and ask ChatGPT to help them lower the bike seat. ChatGPT responds, giving them a set of instructions and then saying, if you have tools, show me and I'll guide you further. The prompter takes a close-up photo of a specific part of the bike and draws a circle to let ChatGPT know to focus on that specific part. The prompter Ryan says, is this the lever? To which ChatGPT responds, no, that's not a lever, it's a bolt. You'll need an Allen wrench to loosen it. Now, obviously, we don't need to go too deep into the details here, but the point is that all of a sudden, you can use pictures of the real world to interact with ChatGPT in a way that wasn't possible before. This, of course, opens up a huge number of different use cases, which is why people have been excited about multimodal and image-based inputs. Now, the second part of it is that in addition to just using voice as an input for the ChatGPT mobile app, ChatGPT can now talk back. OpenAI writes, use your voice to engage in a back-and-forth conversation with ChatGPT. Speak with it on the go, request a bedtime story, or settle a dinner table debate. They've been loving the cutesy examples recently, and the bedtime story is the one that they chose to demo. Now, one small technical detail that was interesting. When it comes to speech recognition, they use Whisper, which has, of course, been lauded for being much farther ahead than many other text recognition services. And that's what's used to transcribe when someone speaks into ChatGPT. But they write, the new voice capability is powered by a new text-to-speech model, capable of generating human-like audio from just text and a few seconds of sample speech. We collaborated with professional voice actors to create each of the voices. They have five different voices, Juniper, Sky, Cove, Ember, and Breeze, that they give a demo of. So is this all rolling out all at once? The answer, of course, is no. OpenAI writes, we are deploying image and voice capabilities gradually. They basically say that this is their normal model anyways, but when it comes to things like image and voices, it's even more important. They write, the new voice technology capable of creating realistic synthetic voices from just a few seconds of real speech opens doors to many creative and accessibility-focused applications. However, these capabilities also present new risks, such as the potential for malicious actors to impersonate public figures or commit fraud. When it comes to the challenges of new image inputs, they say they range from hallucinations to people overly relying on the model's interpretation of images in high-stakes domains. So TLDR, this is the update that the information was reporting about about a week ago. The context they gave, which is the one I agree with, is that the impending reality of Google's Gemini is creating pressure for OpenAI to race towards multimodality, perhaps faster than they might otherwise have. That was Dr. Jim Fan from NVIDIA's take when Dolly 3 was announced. He tweeted, it's not just a stance against mid-journey, it's actually a sneak peek of the upcoming epic battle of massively multimodal LLMs against DeepMind Gemini. Now, the interesting thing about this news is that it's so easy to get caught up in this larger conversation of the battle between Google and OpenAI and this larger phenomenon of competitive accelerationism that we don't stop and remember how remarkable these new features are. When it comes to increasing the utility of ChatGPT in a day-to-day -day way, the ability to interact going back and forth via audio makes it unbelievably more useful for a mobile world. But the ability to use images as inputs, especially when on the go, makes ChatGPT so much closer to the actual super-powered AI assistant that so many people have imagined. The bike example may seem small, but that's the type of thing that people interact with every single day, day in and day out. That's the type of thing that people use Google for. I wonder what percentage of my Google searches have something to do with finding instructions or how to do something. It's probably a fairly big percentage, relatively speaking. By having this type of image input, ChatGPT is effectively competing not just with Google searches, but with my FaceTiming my brother who's much more technical than I am to have him try to figure out something for me. We talked a bunch last week about how Google is trying to differentiate by just loading up on actual utility and making their AIs more useful through integrations with other tools like Google Workspace. And then in the wake of that conversation, we saw Microsoft integrating AI everywhere through Windows 11 updates, and now OpenAI expanding the sort of day-to-day -day type of capabilities that will make ChatGPT much more powerful. Now, this would be interesting if it was the only ChatGPT and OpenAI story, but it was not. However, from this part of all confirmed announced things, we are now moving wildly into the realm of speculation, so a huge grain of salt warning for everything that comes next in this discussion. 
Over the weekend, there was a bunch of discussion on Reddit from two users who claimed that they had access to OpenAI's internal models and who were sharing some of the information that they had seen. I'll link to the specific posts, or at least Twitter screenshots of those posts, but here are some of the highlights that these users claimed. One of those users, Feldsteam, writes, So OpenAI obviously isn't just slowly developing one model at a time, but are of course working on multiple. The one that I know most about has an internal name of Iraqi, so it is kind of wild. So far as I know, it's an everything-to-everything -everything model, meaning you can input on any combination of text, image, audio, and video. So what are some of the other details that these posters give? Well, one, they say that Iraqi succeeds GPT-4 capabilities and can match human experts in many different fields. They claim that hallucination rates are much lower than GPT-4. And interestingly, that half of the training data was synthetic. Now, this has been an ongoing conversation about the extent to which synthetic data might be problematic for training AI models in the future. Although there have been some results, including an unreleased Facebook Llama 2 model that suggests that synthetic data actually can increase performance as well. In other words, that's a big open question, so it's fascinating that potentially this advanced model has 50% of its data coming from synthetic sources. Now, when it comes to when this stuff is coming out, the poster writes, In terms of release date, they originally didn't plan to release in 2024, but I think it's entirely possible to see it released sometime during 2024 as their timelines have been accelerated. Though it is their fault that everyone is accelerating in AI development as the release of ChatGPT and GPT-4 showed what was possible, and now people are slowly catching up, so it's complicated. Now, the other speculation around OpenAI comes around a Twitter account called Jimmy Apples. People are paying attention to this a little bit more than they might a random Twitter account, because after the information reported on September 18th that OpenAI was going to be releasing these multimodal features and that they were working on a new multimodal LLM called Gobi, Jimmy Apples pointed out his own tweet from April 28th, where he said the big multimodal currently in the works at OpenAI is called Gobi. Should I leak more? Given that they were right about that, people are paying attention. And on September 18th, Apple's tweeted, AGI has been achieved internally. Now add to that a bunch of cryptic tweets from Sam Altman, one being, sure, 10x engineers are cool, but damn those 10,000x engineers and researchers, dot, dot, dot. And the other being, short timelines and slow takeoff will be a pretty good call, I think, but the way people define the start of the takeoff may make it seem otherwise. So this is just ratcheted AGI speculation to about a thousand. Simeon CPS tweets, can we consider seriously the hypothesis that one, the recently hyped tweets from OA staff, two, AGI has been achieved internally, three, Sam Altman's comments on the qualification of slow or fast takeoff hinging on the date you count from, four, Sam Altman's comments on 10,000x researchers are actually mapping to something true. The implications are so crazy in terms of power shift or levels of risk over the next few months. Now, Sully Omar captured some of my feeling when he wrote, this whole thing is giving weird vibes. There's two possibilities. One, OpenAI has achieved AGI internally. Two, they're messing with everyone slash hyping things up for fun, question mark. But one thing is for sure, AGI is coming way faster than everyone thinks it is. Eliezer Yudkowsky seems to agree. The Twitter account at PauseAI responded to Sam Altman's tweet about short timelines and slow takeoff and said, how about we abort launch? To which Eliezer responded, you're talking to the wrong person. OpenAI has zero ability to stop the avalanche they started. That's now a matter for treaties between major powers. So friends, lots of intriguing things happening in the world of AI. We've certainly got another example of that competitive accelerationism we've been talking about. And holding aside all of the speculative stuff about AGI, we have a massively more performant and useful ChatGPT coming right around the corner. From the sheer standpoint of people who use ChatGPT and tools like MidJourney for productivity, October is gearing up to be a very, very good month. We will, of course, keep you up to date on all of the developments, including probably any relevant speculation here at the AI Breakdown. But for now, that is going to do it for the show. Thanks, as always, for listening or watching. And until next time, peace.